Okay, so now we're going to talk about chapter 26.4, which is for energy level in atoms. And this is basically the idea that um, if I have an atom here, and it has an electron, this electron can only occupy certain energy levels. And I have a kind of energy diagram here for hydrogen. And you'll probably see this diagram quite a lot, and we use hydrogen a lot because it's probably, it's one of the simpler ones. So basically, it's the idea that this electron, as we know, when a photon hits it, it gives the electron all of the photon's energy. The photon is basically a packet of energy. And all of the photons, the electron absorbs all of one photon's energy. And it gains an energy level. And um, it can, <coughs> it will often, as I said before, release the energy level. But sometimes it can stay excited at a higher energy level. But what was really interesting, when, uh, which I found out, was that it cannot just, like, um, it, it's actually, there are only certain frequencies where it will stay excited. Um, as in, um, and you see this n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. These are specific energy states where it will stay excited. So um, if we consider this one here as a negative 13.6, which is electron volts. Over here, this is the um, negative 3.4 electron volts. Um, basically, uh, when they are when an electron is at this negative 3.4 electron volt level, it can stay in this level. But if it's at negative 3.3, .3, it, it, it cannot stay here. It will just fall straight back down. And it can't, it can't go be at 3.5, it'll go straight back down. But it can stay at 3.4. And what we dis dis discovered is for each element, electrons have specific energy levels at which they can stay and remain excited in. Um, that's called electron excitation when it goes up. And the lowest energy state is called the ground state. And as we know, um, things like to have less energy. So uh, there will be a tendency for electrons to always naturally fall back down to the ground state. But they can also fall down to the other stable states. These are semi-stable states. They can exist and temporarily exist, but then eventually they all have a tendency to go back to the ground state. Um, but going upwards is called ex uh, electron excitation. Going downwards is called electron relaxation. Um, so why can they only exist at um, specific... Uh, energy levels. Well, it's back to this idea of wave-particle duality, that electron can both be a wave and a particle at the same time. And um, I'd like to uh, go back to the uh, to analogy I like to use to explain this is a guitar string. Imagine we have a guitar string and we strum it. And guitar strings, if you know anything about instruments, have fundamentals and overtones and that kind of stuff. Basically, um, the electron movement, which I've got a little diagram of here, must always make a uh, uh, stationary wave, because if it doesn't make a stationary wave, it causes destructive interference with itself, I and mean, it just can't exist if it has destructive interference with itself. So like, uh, like how I like, like to explain with this, is in a, uh, in a, in a guitar string of a, un of a certain length, which is the same with electron, it can, uh, it's, you don't have to understand the specifics, but it's nice to know the core idea behind it. Um, and it could do this, which is a wave of a certain frequency and wavelength, and that'll be fine. Or a guitar string could make a wave that looks like that, which is one full wave. Or it could make a wave which looks like that. Or it could... But you see, there are, there are many, many possibilities it can make, which is many, many electron level, uh, energy levels. But, there, but then, the, um, and if you notice the, um, the difference in the wavelength between them, actually, it gets closer and closer together and you can kind of see the same thing. It starts off as a far wavelength different and it gets closer and closer and closer. And the idea is that there are many levels which it can be stable um, and if you keep drawing this graph it basically gets to lots and lots of many many close lines until you get to this point where the energy can, the electron can completely escape. But anyway, it's this idea that they are numerous but then it can only exist at states where the electron as a wave can make stationary waves. And that's the whole idea and it's all about electron uh, particle wave duality and then you can read up more about it if you're really interested. But anyway, the idea is um, the electron to, to, for it to be excited into a state, into, for it to raise uh, its energy level, and for it to become um, into an excited state, it must receive energy of a specific level. So if it's if there's an electron over here and it wants to come up to up to this level here, it must receive this amount of energy exactly, and that would be 3.4 minus 13.6. That means this electron would have to re receive 10.6 electron volts exactly. To move up this, this range here. And then over here, if it wants to jump from here to here, it must move up exactly that much energy. And it goes the other way around as well. When an electron is over here and it wants to come down to maybe this level here, it releases, exa it releases exactly this much energy. So these energy gaps are exact gaps and they, um, 
they um sorry they re release um exact amount of energy and then so this is back to the idea that um if we have a photon hitting this remember a photon just gives energy once in one packet as a one discrete um, value um, it's like a bundle of money you can take the whole bundle you can't take part of it you can't take too much of it you have to take the whole bundle so um it gives the energy to it and if it has exactly the right amount the in electron can come into this excited state but if it has a little bit too much or a little bit too little the electron will miss this um a perfect perfect um, state it can be in, and it won't go, go into the state. But if it does get into a state, it will stay there temporarily until it gets a chance to fall back down. Maybe it could get promoted again to another state. And this is the idea of discrete electron energy levels, and uh, the reason here I explained with the catastrophe analogy. But anyway, um, because of this, uh, you might be asking, how can a photon get the perfect frequency to just just have enough um, energy to promote a gap exactly? Well, the quick real answer is, is it doesn't have to have exactly the right amount. Um, we can emit uh, light in a whole range of frequency. White light contains the entire visible spectrum, and that's a whole range of frequencies and wavelengths. So we might be emitting um, energy waves of all possible energies in this entire range, and then what will happen is some of them, only this one, certain ones will get absorbed. So um, the photons that have this energy level will get absorbed, but the ones that have this energy level won't get absorbed. And then we can actually absorb it, um, see what gets, what gets absorbed and what doesn't, and this leads to the idea of spectral lines, which I will talk about in the next video. So um, again, this is a short video just giving the idea of discrete energy level of electrons, and um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the last video in this particular series, which is the quantum physics series.